Hey guys, fellow boaters, I wanted to make a, a video for you guys. It's called Boat Ramp Anxiety. Why? Because I've got about 100 hours, a little more than 100 hours on, on a couple of boats here in Florida. And uh, I'm 66 years old and I am definitely a boating rookie. And I go to these ramps and I see the tension, the pre-divorce arguments at these boating ramps uh, from uh, striking the striking the boat onto the onto the dock, uh, uh, the boat floating away and hitting another boat. In fact, that happened just the other day. A beautiful two hundred thousand dollar boat down here. Uh, the, the guy pulled up in his boat. The current took a nice heavy boat and run it over into that beautiful two hundred thousand dollar boat. I, there's so many problems that occur around boating ramps. How difficult could it be to transition over to a boat? Well, it's not easy. I was very, very surprised. I started off with a, with a very heavy 22-foot inboard outboard in these shallow waters around this island. That didn't work out well for us. I decided to go with this little light uh, T16, and uh, she's a challenge that she doesn't handle real well at slow speeds, and she's very subject to current and winds. That's why you will never, in one of a light boat like this, never want to dock with your bimini up because it it turns into a sail essentially and uh, it is a struggle we'll go over that some when we get to the we get to the dock one of the things you can do to prepare yourself and lower the tension on the dock the docking and the boat ramp is to be prepared before you leave the house and what i've found that's very very helpful is to get you a checklist before you leave and my checklist concerns such things as uh, making sure that the, uh, the bilge plug is in, uh, checking my lights, batteries, fire extinguishers, fuel, uh, visual distress signals in a dry place, personal flotation device stored. I've lost two of those because uh, I'm not storing them properly in the uh, area up there. Throwable device stowed, bilge plugs, I put that three times to make sure that all of that is in. Discuss emergency procedures with the people that you're going with that'll be on the boat. Um, have a float pan left with someone. Uh, make sure that your VHF radio is charged, uh, that you have a boat hook. This right here is probably the, the greatest reducer in stress for a new boater at the boat ramp is a boat hook. I see so few people using these and they are so advantageous because you can't always pull your boat up to the dock exactly where you want it to go. This will allow you to, to slow down, reach over, grab that lateral board on the dock and pull yourself in without a problem. People say, well, that's just too long. I don't want that in my boat. These do come in a telescoping format. You can have ones that you unscrew and they actually stretch out if you like that. I prefer this. I have two of them. And it's become so important to me out on the water and at the dock that I've actually stored on my boat permanently. I keep it on there permanently. Uh, the boat hook, flashlight, binoculars, registration receipt, make sure charts, uh, my navigational instruments. Number two, making your time on the water very, very uh, less stressful, let's say is your navigational instrument. Make sure that you have a depth finder. If you're fishing, it's great to have a fish finder got with that with your transducer. And uh, I have the Simrad with, a, with the uh, Navionics boating in it. I also have Navionics boating on my iPad underneath the seat. I have a Garmin GP, an external GPS to go with that and the charging, all the charging cables. And then I have Navionics boating on my phone, my iPhone. And it has automatic routing. All I have to do is push where I'm at, push where I want to go, and it automatically routes me. All I have to do is confirm the, the draft on my boat corresponds to the water levels that they're sending me through. Uh, that's, it's incredible the, the amount of help that a good navigational system is. Dressing, make sure you have a hat, your glasses, sunscreen. Um, something that I found very, very important is to get you a couple of good pair of water shoes. Those are just invaluable in case you do have to get out of the boat. You have a problem out there and you end up having to walk. These don't float off your feet. you got a good sole to them, especially on some of this rough basin out here with coral. It'll sure save your feet. Uh, make sure that I always want to make sure that I have this. My transom saver is all set up. Again, I have a notation for the bilge plug. Make sure that that's in. So those things, if you'll just do that checklist, 
that will help out a lot. Put it on your iPhone or make you a card or whatever, whatever is necessary. Um, some other things that I've done to this boat to make it less stressful for me, it comes with the OEM, the factory sends a 13 gallon tank to this boat. That's wholly insufficient for traveling out here in the Gulf. So I've put a secondary uh, below deck mower 13 gallon tank in there. Under each seat in the front, I have two and a half gallons of fuel. Under, make sure that I have plenty of fuel. I also have installed a heavy duty, heavy flow bilge pump that's on an automatic float switch. So I don't have to worry about my boat becoming swamped. If I leave it out here on an island somewhere to go someplace and we get one of these Florida monsoons or I'm at a restaurant in town, I have it at a dock and if I floor the monsoon, it will pump that water without me being present, which is a big help. That's a, that's a stress reducer. Um, let's see what else. Batteries. This boat comes with one battery. It's wholly insufficient. You need two batteries. I have a, a thousand amp cranker, cranking battery, and I have a hybrid in there to run my accessories. I put a Perco battery switch that allows me to go back and forth. I know that if I'm 30 miles off, out there in the Gulf, if something happens to my cranking battery, I can switch over to number two or all and get me enough to get me back home. That, that's, that's very, very important. Uh, I'll just walk, walk around with me real quick. Things that help at the boat ramp. You guys who are using your, your T-16 or your Tahoe trailer, if you're using it in salt water, you're setting yourself up for a fail. Those are, those are um, coated trailers, they're steel, and they will rust from the inside out. I've gone with a less expensive galvanized tandem for my T-16. It withstands the salt water pretty good. Uh, also what I've done is I've included a, a three inch tow bar on here, an extension. This is where the hitch normally goes. This bar allows me to back up to the water and it's time to, or it's positioned just about where I do not have to put, generally never have to put my rear tires of my vehicle into the water. It allows me to back up just enough for the rear end to float and me to get this off of the trailer. I always have a spare tire. Make sure that this belt is always good. Uh, salt water tends to eat at it. Make sure it stays good. That you have a safety chain. Don't rely on that belt only. Always check both these tandems and that, that's your, uh, your hardware in here. I use stainless hardware and uh, my leaves, my springs, make sure that they're in good condition. Always use this transom saver. Somebody from, somebody said that they weren't, they, they had heard that they weren't required to use a transom saver. Well, your trim motor is going to be punished if you don't use that transom saver. Make sure that everything is up before you leave. And again, check and make sure that that bilge plug is in, that your straps are, are good and tight. If you do all this before you leave, you can reduce your stress significantly. You'll be ready to go when you get to the ramp. Another thing is always check and make sure that you have your, your docking, your docking ropes. I was doing this for a while. I had this mounted in here. I throw it up underneath the seat. One day I was leaving. This rope had been left out because I washed it. It had a longer rope. It got underneath the wheel. Had I not heard it underneath the wheel in the grass, I would have pulled this entire section of the starboard side out it would have pulled this completely out of the boat. So these need to be stored. And what I've done is I've put mine on a polymer link. I'm not real impressed with, the, with that spring, but I put it on a polymer link. And when I get to the ramp, I can, I can hook it on quickly, get my business taken care of. Then I can take it back off and stow it without a real big problem. I have one of these here in the, from the, on the, uh, underneath the, the front seat. I've also installed an extra cleat at the helm because I can just reach through, grab a pylon, 
and I can tie myself off quickly without ever having to leave the helm. And this rope is down in the floor, so I know it's not going to blow out. So I leave it there. And then in the back, I have all my paperwork, and I have another, I have the paperwork for the boat, and I have another docking rope back here in case we need it. And it can go to either side easily. Something else I've done to my trailer because I am a rookie. Real quick, I call these training wheels. They're training wheels for me. I put these on with stainless steel brackets. What it does is, is, is uh, if I'm offloading by myself, when I offload this boat and she's floating in the water, it gives me an opportunity to get up on the boat, get ready to move the boat, and if I don't have to worry about my boat turning on me, it keeps it locked in. When I'm loading the boat, this catches, even if I'm a little cattywampus, it catches and it runs me true straight up to the tank here and I don't have to worry about going off the boat or hitting a fender. So it keeps my boat off of the fender. This is very, very helpful. I bought these brackets or stainless steel off of Amazon. All stainless steel hardware. It's a two before. I got some uh, bunk carpeting. The carpeted them. They have been a huge help. That's about it. Make sure that your cover for your Simrad or whatever GPS you use, make sure it's tied down. They will blow off as well. And once again, let me make sure. I've got to make sure this is tied down. This is my throwable. Make sure that it's tied down because it will end up in the roadway. The rod and reels are secure. Everything else is good. We're going to head over to the boat ramp. Okay, we just arrived at the staging area for the boat ramp. First thing you want to do is get these straps off. And what I'll do is I have my favorite helper here with me, my first mate. But um, I'll I'll, I'll approach this as if I was by myself in, in launching the boat, and um, that may make it a little more applicable for some of you guys who, who do go out boating by yourself or you have to launch by yourself. I'm already feeling just a little bit of tension. <laughs> I don't see any reason to be rushed here. From this point on, slow down. People get upset at with you, or get upset with you for some reason. Slow down. Where we tend to make our errors is when we rush and we don't think about what we're doing. But the, what I'm planning on doing now is pulling here and backing into the ramp. I'm gonna get it close to the water. First thing I'm going to do is take off my safety chain. Then I'm going to back it into the water to the point right at where my rear wheels just start to touch the water line. Hopefully the back of the boat will show some flotation at that point and then we'll carry it on from there. Go ahead and move that shape for the safety chain. I could remove both at the same time. We've got a boat coming in here. Manatee. But um, I just want to get that safety chain so I'm not struggling with it in the water. There's a manatee. Huh? Manatee? Yeah. Another thing we have to watch out for here are manatees. One of the reasons I have the light mounted on the, on the bow there.
have to get a little more in the water I think I've got a I think I've got sufficient flotation if not my bride will jump in and back me up otherwise if I was by myself I'd have to come back out of the water <laughs> low tide no it should be tide advisor of course that's another thing about tide Took the nearest little boat ramp here, and uh, you don't you don't realize it. It doesn't look like it. Uh, you see the ripples on the water out here, and uh, it looks pretty calm. Underneath here, believe it or not, even in this canal, is sufficient current. And this little light T16 it throws it around. It throws it around like the top on a smooth surface. It it's just really really frustrating. What happens is is a lot of people get into this tight configuration here and they panic and they try to make adjustments with their motor when you ease yourself up into this area and you put your motor in reverse and slow yourself down if you're not right up to the boat ramp stop trying to make adjustments with your throttle that's where people destroy their boat hit other boats um, I, another thing I wanted to show you when you're in that scenario, grab your boat pole, and you can control yourself with your boat pole. In fact, we don't have anybody coming here. And another good idea is, when, is to, when you leave the helm, shut your motor off. If you do get cattywampus in here, at least your prop isn't turning, and you're not going to rub up against one of these poles. Uh, I'm almost hesitant to do it because this boat is so gets so cattywampus. But um, what we'll do, I'll go ahead and turn on my GPS. And while I'm thinking about it, what I wanted to tell you to do, always carry you a little mushroom anchor. That's a, that's a little, uh, about a five or eight pound mushroom. I've got a 15 pound in the well. If you get in trouble out here, you lose a motor or you start to drift without power, you can toss this over, side, over the side uh, and, and hook it to the cleat and you're good to go, you're stationary. And it'll keep you from drifting off into mangroves or shallow water, whatever. All right. I think I see the manatee down there. You done? No, uh-uh. What are you doing? I'm gonna let this go. And I'll, uh, you, are you still on? Mm-hmm. Okay. What I wanted to show you is what happens 
with the T-16 in these light boats when you're at a dock is that they could start to drift off on you. Okay, here, here, goes, here goes the tail end. There's no need to panic. There's no need to fight them. If the, if the tail end starts coming around, simply take your dock pole. Simply take your dock pole. You can lift it up underneath here, lift it up, put it underneath it, and pull yourself back to the dock. Right now, the currents die down just a little bit. When I pulled up initially, it was pushing me to the other side. It was so bad. So, you're going to put that in there for me. Okay, here we go on the other side. You may need it again. Now, there, here comes the wind. This shows you how susceptible this little T-16 is to the wind. Now it wants to get me cattywampus in here. Nothing to worry about. You can just reach over here and push off. Push yourself back. Don't try to make those corrections with your motor. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. We've got uh, another boat coming in. <clears throat> Hold on just a sec. There's a manatee right here in the middle. What we want to do is we want to steer. Steer. Let the wind push me out. And then we'll put it into gear. The reason being that if I try to turn this boat, it's going to push me right into the dock over there where I don't want to go. So you steer. I've got a manatee right here. I'm try to I think it's a turtle. Baby. Is it a manatee? It's a a manatee or alligator? Oh gosh, I don't know. Slow down. I've got a manatee or an alligator right here. I'm not sure which it's one. It's a manatee. It's a manatee. Oh. Okay. It's one of the reasons I put the uh, powerful scatter and spot on the front at the bow. They come in here at night, these manatees, if you don't watch them, you'll run right smack dab over them. <clears throat> Done? No. Come on up here. How you doing? What I wanted to explain, when you're navigating around a boat ramp, in these marinas, there is, come back here, maybe, uh, me, there is an area in your, there's an area that's a, a forward, you don't need to get out of that little neutral area. Just lock it in and stay in it, and that's all you need in here. When you start hearing your, your prop turn in the water, you've got too much throttle in out here. And that's where you lose control. Something that I discovered the hard way because I was too prideful to get instruction. Hey guys. I was too prideful to get instruction. Is that um, these, like a, hel like a helicopter, I, I equate it a lot to like flying a helicopter. The secret to hovering a helicopter is knowing your neutral, correcting neutral. What new helicopter pilots do is they correct and they hold it, then they start going that way. Then they come back through neutral, they hold it, they start going that way, and they never can hover. The key is to always come back to neutral when you're hovering. Same way with the boat. If you're having a problem, remember that this doesn't go back to neutral by itself. You have to physically pull it back to neutral. Uh, not too long ago, I was over the boat ramp helping a couple of gentlemen come in because they were struggling to get the boat onto the into the, the uh, boat ramp area. And I, I actually got in the water 
and the boat was coming at me, I grabbed it to keep him from striking the dock at speed. And I noticed that I was having trouble stopping the boat. I looked up, he still had it in forward. He didn't realize that when he let go, that he left the boat in forward. And then the same thing in reverse. And it became, it was quite a, quite a feat. He was embarrassed, I was embarrassed for him. His friend was trying to make an excuse that it's their first or second time. Always remember, when you're out here in these areas, in this tight, confined area, neutral's always your friend. And use your boat pole to push off of obstacles or push off of another boat. That particular boat pole, uh, boat uh, or dock pole, has a, a, a rubber tip. You're not going to mar up somebody else's boat. Not near as much as if you strike them at speed. Go back to neutral, settle down, calm down, take a deep breath, grab your boat pole and get yourself situated. Real quick, uh, I don't know if we'll continue on the first, second, or third video of this. I'll take you out, especially you new boat owners. And um, one of the things I want you to remember is steer then gear. Don't throttle and turn. Turn then throttle. You'll get a much better, and just touch it at first. Get your boat, just touch it, get yourself corrected, and then, then take off with it. Uh, but it's always steer then gear in that order. I'm going to go around the canal here, and we're going to come up on some markers. And for those of you who are not familiar with markers, you're just now learning. It's very, very important that you learn the phrase, red, right, return. Red, right, return means that when you're coming in from a large active body of water into a smaller body of water, whenever you see lateral markers, you will always want them on your right-hand side. You'll want the green marker on your left-hand side. We're going to come up on it here in a moment. I think there's somebody working on the house. It's not in the water. We have shark. We have manatees. We have dolphins. We have snook. Um, Mullet. This is a no weight zone. And I'm pushing it just a little bit because I'm in a hurry to get out of here. We're running right at 4.3 miles an hour. Uh, one thing about this little light boat in this, in this wind, you do need some forward motion. That's something else that I had to learn the hard way. You, know, you don't have any brakes on a boat. Your only brake is either reverse or drop an anchor over the, over the side. Reverse does slow, or not reverse, but neutral will slow the boat quite a bit and make it manageable quickly. But remember, if your prop's not turning, you're at the mercy of the current and the wind. You need to have your prop turning, okay, whether however slow it is, in order to have any sense of control. And this little light boat does not handle well much below three miles an hour in, um, in wind. So keep that in mind. We're coming up on our first green marker, although that marker is for the, the little channel that goes through here. I'm assuming right now it's much too shallow for me in this V-hole, so we're going to go out to a little deeper water and do some fishing. And another thing I wanted to mention to you and you guys, do not rely... Okay. We've, got a, uh, we've got a pontoon coming in. Is Do not rely on your tidal chart always to tell you exactly how high or how low the tide is in that um, wind plays a significant role in the tide. I've been in here, it's supposed to be high tide, and the, these uh, sandbars are almost sticking out of the water. This is a very precarious place. This is, uh, we're on Pine Island. We're leaving out of Lavender's Landing. It's on the north side of the island. And uh, you, have to thread, you have to thread the needle here. There is one way in, there's one way out. And if you veer off of that much, you're going to drag your prop. And it will come out a little shinier than when you put it in. So here's my first green marker. I'm keeping it to my right. This is marker number nine. We'll go around marker number nine. I'm going to go up to the next marker here. I'm going to keep it on my right because I'm leaving shallow water and I'm going into deep water. 
So in this configuration, my green will be on my right, my red will be on my left. We don't have any red in here at this time, we just have green, but we want to keep the green markers on our right. Uh, another, another good suggestion for you guys, here's a sandbar here, you probably can't see it in the camera, I can see it with these glasses. Get you a pair of polarized blue blocker glasses if you're boating in the sun. You will be able to see the shallow, you'll be able to differentiate the shallow water from the deep water. That helps a lot. Looking out here with polarized, I see there's a massive sandbar right out here to my front. And there's a sandbar over here to my left. And I've got to thread the needle right where that boat is coming in there. I need to go just about exactly where they're at or I'm going to drag my prop. Is that good fish? Mm -hmm. This place is still suffering somewhat from Hurricane Ian. And I believe Hurricane Ian um, actually actually uh, adjusted the water basin somewhat. So your chart may not always be perfect. So keep that in mind. Watch your, watch your depths. We're 5-2 here now, which is pretty good for this location. You can see there's a sandbar right here. dredging uh, bucket out there in the water you can see the camera forward you can see the stem to the dredging bucket if you go left at that red marker very far you're going to hit that dredging bucket and you're going to sink your vessel we're going to pick up a little bit of speed in fact i'm going to have to go let this guy come in i got to get out of this we're going to we're kind of a precarious position here i've got a large vessel coming in I'm supposed to yield right away, but I'm right in between two sandbars. So I'm going to skirt the side of the sandbar and yield right away to him and try not to drag my prop. Show the vessel coming in. I've got a sandbar right here to my right. Good one.